Hey, this is Sesh. Welcome to the second of a pair of videos on Breadth First Search or BFS for graphs. In the first part, you saw how the BFS algorithm works on directed and undirected graphs and how to derive its running time. In this video, you will see how to implement BFS in Java on graphs that are stored in adjacency linked lists, a storage scheme that was covered in a separate video titled Graphs Adjacency Linked List Storage. Let's begin with a quick recap of the crux of the BFS algorithm and use it as a springboard for the implementation. Here's the undirected graph that we used in the first part video to illustrate BFS. We will run BFS again on this graph, but this time we will use it to build our code as we go. To start with, here's the adjacency linked list storage for this graph. Each place in the array stores an object of class vertex. The name field in this class is the name of the vertex, and the edge list field is a reference to a neighbor object, which is a linked list node. The node has two fields, vertex num, which is the array index number of the neighbor vertex, and next, which is the pointer to the next neighbor in the list. Note that the array location where a vertex is stored serves as its number. So the vertex number is just a means to index into the array to get its info and there is no implication beyond this for the algorithm. In this example, the vertices are stored in the array in alphabetical order. So vertex A is at array index 0, B is at index 1, and so forth. Also, the neighbors of a vertex are stored in alphabetical order. So, for instance, A's neighbors B, C, and X are stored in that order in its adjacency linked list. This is just to make it easier to follow the BFS process there's nothing about the BFS that requires any specific arrangement of vertices or neighbors. And finally, there is the graph class, with a field called edge lists that refers to the graph's adjacency linked lists array. In the part one video, you saw that BFS needs a queue in which to hold vertices. For the implementation, we'll use the following queue class. Only the public interface of the class is shown here, the complete class is included in the code artifacts that accompany this video. Note that this is a generic class that can accept any type of object. Okay, let's get started with the algorithm and code. We have to implement a method in the graph class with BFS starting at some vertex. But we also need to mark vertices as visited in a Boolean array indexed by vertex number would work well for this, as shown here. This array needs to be passed along as a parameter to the BFS method, since the BFS process may need to be restarted from other vertices if all vertices are not reached in one run. So the header changes accordingly. Lastly, the queue needs to be sent in as a parameter as well. BFS starts at some arbitrary vertex in the graph, say vertex C in this example. This vertex is first marked as visited in the code by setting to true the value in the visited array indexed by this vertex number start, which in this example updates the visited array as shown. The actual task done when visiting a vertex would depend on the graph application that uses BFS. For purpose of illustration, let's just output the vertex name when we visit it. The vertex name is obtained by referencing the edge list array using the vertex number as index, which gives the vertex object at that location whose name field is the name of the vertex. Following the visit, the start vertex number 2 for C is enqueued. From this point on, the BFS process iterates on the vertices in the queue as long as the queue is not empty. In each iteration, a vertex is dequeued. Next, all the neighbors of this vertex are examined by looping through its adjacency linked list. A pointer called NBR is used to track to the linked list initially set to the first neighbor of the vertex, which is referenced through the edge list field of the vertex object. The loop spins until the NBR pointer hits null, advancing to the next neighbor in every iteration. In the example graph, C is dequeued and its adjacency linked list is scanned. For each neighbor that's encountered, if it has not already been visited, it is visited and enqueued. In the example, each of C's neighbors is checked found to be not visited, is visited, and enqueued. So that's about it for the BFS code. 
here's a sequence of iterations to finish up BFS on the example. Now, for graphs in which all vertices are not reachable from the start vertex, a single BFS run won't cut it. For instance, if we had this directed graph on which we want to run the BFS, and we start at C, then the vertices D and E would be reached, but not A and B. To ensure that all vertices are covered, we will restart BFS at either of the unvisited vertices A or B. If the restart happens from B, then A is still not reached. So another restart will have to be done from A, which will end up covering all vertices. What this means for the code is we need another piece that will restart BFS as needed by calling the BFS method on each new restart vertex. Let's call this piece the driver. Since a restart will have to be done whenever there are unvisited vertices, the driver will need to scan the visited array. When it comes across a cell with a false value in it, it should call the BFS method with the index of the cell as a vertex number. While we're at it, let's set up the visited array and the queue to hold vertex numbers to finish up the method. Any application that needs to run BFS on a graph should call the driver, not the other BFS method, since the BFS process should include any and all restarts. And since the BFS algorithm itself arbitrarily picks a starting vertex, an application must not supply one which means the driver method does not accept any parameters. Finally, in order to ensure that the other method is not called from outside the class, we change its access level from public to private. In our example graph, the driver starts off BFS at index 0 of the visited array, which corresponds to vertex C. This results in C, D, and E being visited. Back at the driver, the for loop continues the scan of the visited array. The next unvisited cell is at index 1, which is vertex B. A call to BFS with this vertex visits B and returns to the driver without visiting any other vertex. The driver finds that the next unvisited cell is at index 2, which is A, with which it calls BFS. Once again, A is visited and BFS returns without visiting any other vertex. The driver continues scanning the visited array and does not find any other unvisited vertex. The BFS process is complete. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial on BFS implementation. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.